I'm guessing when you when you got up today, you looked at the schedule, and you thought, well, we're gonna have four pretty pretty fun games today, um, and they'll take place in this order. You were wrong. I was wrong. We were all wrong. Uh, the Boston Carolina game now has been moved to ridiculously early tomorrow for me, anyways. For people in Europe, they're like, "Yes, another game in our wheelhouse." And for Carolina, that could change things. But I'll do that. I'll talk about that when I get to the the preview for tomorrow's games, which will be tonight. Because, yeah, I was planning on doing that in the morning, but now I have to do it tonight because we lost a game today. Uh, and we lost it because Tampa and Columbus decided to just hog the Eastern ice and they were going to play in Toronto forever. Uh, honestly, what a game. I, I, I have to say, I, you'll notice I stopped tracking the number of overtimes. I, I, I had OT and I changed it to two, two OT and then I went to three. I was like, you know what? Heck with it. So five overtimes. It's not 15. It's a five. Five overtimes. Uh, Hedman was playing in this game, played a ton. Comparatively speaking, though, Seth Jones, am I right? Anybody who had anything negative to say about Seth Jones ever, you want to bring up any kind of stats on Seth Jones and show he's overrated, um, go ahead and email those thoughts to Seth Jones isn't overrated, and I'm probably wrong, but I'm going to say it anyways, at uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm talking about, .gov.au, because it's run by the Australian government. Um, Foodie was prominent early. I, I thought Liam Foodie had a good game. And and when we get to game four, which is ridiculous, or game two, which is ridiculous. <laughs> it basically, it's game four, right? I was right the first time. When game four starts, uh, that's that's 3 p.m. Eastern on Thursday. That's, that's an early start, considering they played three games today. So, Kalorn gets a penalty. Columbus goes to the power play, which had zero goals against the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, and they get one. Dubois scores from Texier and Jones at 239. It was a Chernak stick deflection, and I went to 2019 anyone. Is this is it going to happen again? Because I was like, all right, Columbus, they get off to the early start. Are we going to see Columbus run things up here? Uh, Corpusalo denied Hedman as the Bolts pushed, and then point scores from Kucherov and Hedman at 629. That one deflected off of Point's leg into the net. There you go. Fantastic. Two goals in six minutes, 27 seconds. This game's going to have a ton of scoring in it. Uh, Jenner got a breakaway that was turned aside. Tampa was up 9-5 to five in shots at the half. They were controlling the play in this one. Another solid game for Corpusalo. Good game for the Bolts. I had no idea how solid a game this was going to be for Corpusalo. Nobody knew. Um, Stevens, I thought his line looked good. Uh, the Bolts' depth showed up very well. Tampa Bay was up in hits as well as in shots, which is rare. So I thought that was noteworthy to put up on the board. Uh, Gerby Robinson, then they had a break that was stopped. Uh, Col Columbus started to push back. There was a last-minute penalty to Texier. Uh, Tampa Bay gets a power play, which was two for five in the round robin. Does not score. We go to the second period in a 1-1 tie. Over nine minutes for Seth Jones in the first period. Oh, Seth Jones. Lots of ice time today. Uh, I tweeted out during the game if I was his agent, I'd be asking for him to get paid by the hour rather than the salary because plays a lot. Uh, there was a scrum at 115 after Corpus Allo stopped a headman shot and Savard was kind of bloodied on the play. And then they left Savard on the ice. There were some weird decisions made by officials today. And normally when a guy's jersey's bloodied and he's bleeding, you got to get off the ice. you got to fix that. They didn't on that play. Uh, Columbus had a chance that ended up half saved and landed on the net. If that puck had gone in, this review would have been done four hours ago. Uh, puck luck for Vasilevsky, absolutely. Uh, Vasilevsky then had the diving stop on Robinson. Uh, there's another scrum after that. And Vasilevsky was needing the head before that scrum by Robinson. No, it's not a penalty. And we'll, we'll move on from that. Um, Columbus gets a power play that lasted 27 seconds. Yanni Gord then takes a minor. Or Yanni Gord took the minor first, and then Seth Jones takes the minor as well. Probably just to get off the ice. Probably just, uh, I'm not getting off this ice. I'm going to hook this guy, because it's the only way I'm going to get get off the ice. To which Tortorella's probably yelling at him, that means you're going to get a double shift, Seth. Not getting out of it that easy. Gosh darn it. 
So Point gets a great chance. He fanned on, looked skyward. Uh, Wenberg had a chance that went wide. Wenberg had a bunch of good chances that just wouldn't go for him. Uh, Vasilevsky was minus a stick on that one too. The Bolts then get a, a too many men call, and there was kind of a penalty parade in that second period. Uh, the Bolts taking uh, point shots and seeking deflections. This was a game plan they had. I might suggest that for the next game, find another game plan because Corpusello, pretty good at figuring those out, and Columbus is pretty good at defending them. Uh, their shot blocking is fantastic, and their defending is pretty excellent as well. Uh, pretty wide open. Both get both goalies were keeping it 1-1 at that point. Columbus was better, I thought, in the second than the first period, and then they would prove that as Bjorkstrand gets a goal from whatever angle. From Dubois and Kukin at 19-12, and I, my first thought was how, so I put that on the board, and it was right over the shoulder off the crossbar and in. Very impressive goal by Bjorkstrand. Basically had like a two-inch squared shot that he could take, and he takes it. And so it's 2-1 to one Columbus after two, and I thought, hey, so Columbus is ready to steal one here. Uh, third period, 23 seconds in, Yanni Gord scores from McDonough and Coleman. This is one of the best games Yanni Gord's had all year. Absolutely fantastic game. Um, lots of traffic at the net. Tie game. Corpusello kicked it in himself. He wants that one back, especially when you look at the, how long this game went. If that goal had been stopped, uh, this review would have been up four hours ago, and Boston and Carolina would have had a game today. Uh, Tampa Bay pushed for the lead right after that. Corpusello uh, then had a rebound mishap. Stevens' uh, wrap, wraparound was saved. So Corpusello kind of lazy on some of the, the rebounds. I, it, it's it's bizarre looking through my notes and realizing that was a, a, a storyline and we had no idea what was about to happen. I have absolutely zero bad things to say regarding Corpusello at this stage, and I mean that. Was he a little lazy on some of those rebounds? Sure. Did he make up for it? And a half, yes. Um, Shattenkirk takes penalty, sends Columbus to the power play. The shots were 7 nothing though, for Tampa at 7 minutes. Tampa, it looked like, wanted to end this. Hey, right. Uh, Columbus pushed back at the half. Vasilevsky uh, uh, made some needed saves. Uh, Kucherov uh, tapped Corpusalo at the whistle, which uh, caused a bit of a scrum after. Lots of shots for Tampa. Nothing going in. And uh, it, it felt like overtime with five minutes left. There was a too many men called in on Tampa Bay, so Columbus gets a fifth power play. Uh, Vasilevsky denied Dubois. Columbus was really trying to steal it. And then we went to overtime. And I looked at this board and I thought, you know, I got room down here to put overtime. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and use the little board. Now, the last time that I was using the little board was the Minnesota-Vancouver game. But all I wrote on it was Tanev, and I went... Well, that goal was 11 seconds in. Seems ridiculous to have a board just for that little moment. And I know Canuck fans would have said, "Oh, that's that's funny," but no. So I thought, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the little board. And we're gonna see how it goes. Let's jump into overtime. And now I got to move the board back because we don't have enough room for all of the notes to get on. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, overtime. Vasilevsky denied Wierenski. Columbus had the early edge. Corpusalo denied a Palat chance. Tampa Bay pressured it five minutes. Shots were seven to five. Columbus, though, at 11 and a half minute mark of overtime. Columbus, well aware, hey, we can we can do this again. We've got to do this again. Keep in mind, Columbus had two overtime games against Toronto. They already came into this game probably pretty bruised up and pretty tired. And so they want to get this done. And Tortorella giving a lot of ice time to Seth Jones and Zach Wierenski in this game. And they probably wanted it finished, too. Uh, the Bolts' fourth line was pushing late. They hit a goal post. Uh, Corpusalo made a nice save on Sorelli. Nash had a shot block. Both teams were blocking a lot. Uh, Corpusalo made a bit of a lazy play. Again, I feel terrible for even saying that. Uh, Palat almost scored and, yeah, covered the puck. But we go to double overtime. We're into the second overtime. And I'm like, all right, so we're into the second overtime. Is this game going to end before the the the, the Calgary-Dallas game? N no. No, it's not. Uh, Kucherov had a blast. Great chance. It went wide. Uh, Tampa Bay had some chances that were just missing. Dubois then had a chance as Columbus pressured at the four and a half minute mark. A lot of good back and forth play. I have to say, people complain, oh, this game just sucks. After the first overtime, the players are just really tired and the game's stupid. This game was excellent all the way through. And um, watching an interview with Braden Point where he said, 
Uh, these guys were just having fun. Once you reach a certain point, you don't feel like all the exhaustion and everything. You're just having fun, and you just relax and play your game. Uh, Savard and Gavrikov had chances. Columbus was dominating the second overtime. Corpusello then robbed Yanni Gord. The shots, still were 8-1 to one for Columbus at 13 minutes. So they had their chances, but all right, Vasilevsky's in net. It's easy to forget Vasilevsky in a game like this, although Vasi had a pretty darn good game as well. All the attention's going to be about Corpusello. Everybody's going to talk about Corpusello. I'm going to give a little bit of praise to Andre Vasilevsky. Um, Coleman had a great chance with five minutes left, and this was the longest game in Columbus Blue Jackets history at that stage. Johnson had a chance that was stopped. Some good back and forth play, but we go to a third overtime. Third. Uh, first three three uh, overtime games since 2016. Uh, Nashville versus San Jose was that one. That was a game four. Fisher had the winner for Nashville. So San Jose doesn't fare very well in really long overtime games. We'll talk about that again in a second. This is where Mike Milbury says he thinks that we should drop to four on four or three on three after overtime and have a shootout. If, if you are of the mind that a shootout is ever the way to decide a playoff game, we will never see eye to eye on that. You cannot have a Stanley Cup decided or a Stanley Cup game decided by a shootout. You can't. It is, it is a denial of, of everything that's great about hockey to these games that are, are monumental and fantastic. And when I hear that from Mike Milbury... I, I don't know what to say. Because if there's a single player who's going, why don't we just have a shootout on the ice? I would be completely stunned. I didn't see anybody on Tampa or Columbus. I'm pretty sure there's nobody on that bench thinking, boy, we should if we had a shootout, that'd be great. No. This is hockey. You play till there's a winner. You play five on five. The gimmicky three-on-three -three stuff, that's fine during the regular season. Shootout, I hate the shootout. I've always hated the shootout. During the regular season, when they go to a shootout, I don't watch. If there's other games on, I'm like, all right, well, that's where the hockey ended. The shootout, to me, is not hockey. It's a skills competition. I understand. There are fans that love it. There there are players that really enjoy the, the whole shootout thing. But for me, personally, that's where the hockey's ended. And, of course, when I've done my power rankings board, there are people who've gotten mad at me because, all right, my team won three games this week. All in shootouts, I treat them like ties. So the idea of a shootout in playoffs, to me, is abhorrent. It is, it, it is basically saying if a baseball game goes long enough, we should just have a home run competition. If a basketball game goes long enough, we should have a free throw competition or a slam dunk competition. Um, and if a football game goes long enough in the playoffs, well, just have a field goal kicking uh, DLE to decide it. it. It's not a thing. I have railed against shootouts in world championships in hockey. I have railed against shootouts in the World Cup in soccer. It is deflating, and it, it, is, it is something that if the Stanley Cup playoffs ever featured a shootout, I would have a really hard time covering that without complaining. I loved this game. I loved every minute of this game. I thought this game was exciting. I know there have been games that were slow. I remember the four overtime game between Dallas and Vancouver. That game was a snooze. But that game was a snooze all the way through. It didn't start in the overtime. So, step down off my soapbox. And we'll get back into the review, shall we? Um, and I, I honestly, I, I feel that way. You guys can look through any old video of mine you want. Find anything that I've ever said. And wow, it went to a shootout. And I'm so happy about that. No. No. But this is why you can't have unlimited overtimes during the regular season either. You cannot expect a team to do this and then hit the flight after the game and play the next night and anything like that. You, you just can't. So you can only do this in playoffs, obviously. All right. Corpusallo denied Stevens. Uh, Wierenski had a chance that went wide. Columbus was buzzing there. Felino takes a penalty. Bolts go to the power play on a high stick, and you have to call that penalty. You have to call that penalty. So Felino wasn't happy. Felino, of course, was in the box when Toronto scored in overtime in Game 4, and I thought, if this happens again, Felino's going to be really choked. 
Um, more robbery by Corpusello then. And, and how did Bjorkstrand miss that one shot? It looked like it was deflected. His stick was deflected last moment there. It might have been Bogosian that deflected it. It's It was days ago now when that play happened, so I can be forgiven for forgetting exactly who deflected that one. Um, wraparound attempt by Jones as well as he tried to end it. Uh, Tampa Bay pressed at the 11-minute mark, and this was the longest game in Bolt's history at that point. And you'll notice I only had one more line on here where I thought, all right, maybe I can just stop this with one board. We'll, just, we'll get a goal. Uh, the Bolts pressed at 15 minutes. Point had a chance it was denied, and I put my Lord Corpy because... Corpusallo absolutely robbing the Blue Jackets, or robbing the Lightning all the way through and giving the Blue Jackets a chance in this game. Absolutely fan flip fantastic Just amazing. This is one of those times where I can't show highlights because they're copyrighted. You can't show NHL highlights and then say, all right, and, you know, I'm, I'm a YouTuber, I'm going to get paid. The NHL goes, no, thanks for showing those highlights. We're going to get paid on that. Uh, so we go to the fourth overtime. Uh, first four overtime games since 2008 where Dallas and San Jose played and Dallas won that game. It was game six. They won the series and it was Brendan Morrison scored the winner. So there's a lot of trivia answers in that one. And basically if a game goes to three overtimes and it's San Jose, you can go to bed because they're going to lose. Just spoiler alert. Uh, Hedman had a chance that went out of play. Corpusallo tied Rudy's mark of 73 saves. He would cruise past that. Uh, Coleman nearly ends it. Gerby collided with McDonough. He got the worst of it. He got an elbow to the chin, and this is where referees aren't calling anything. Now, during the first period, they might have called that as an elbow. The other side of that, though, is this. Nathan Gerby, being about the same height as me, when you're shorter, it's easy to get elbowed in the face. It It is it is very easy. And while I don't buy that argument at times, there are times where somebody goes, well, the height difference, and I say no. In this case, yeah, probably. Gerby wasn't arguing too much for it either. Uh, he would he would stay in the game. Uh, Sorelli and Bogosian were then both denied uh, by the record setter. Uh, Vasilevsky denied a snipe by Savard. Uh, Savard had no goals during the regular season, almost got one there. The shots were 80 to 55 for Tampa at that point, and it was the 10th longest game ever. It quickly hit ninth after I wrote that on the board. There was a three on three on two for Tampa Bay that went wide. Corpusallo denied Hedman. You know what's coming next, right? All right. How many boards does Shannon have? I have enough. I even yelled upstairs when I grabbed this one and I said, I, I yelled out to Yvonne, you know, you always say I probably have too many boards in my room. Not tonight I don't. So, yeah, uh, the Bolts iced it with 7.06 left. And, of course, we're still in the fourth overtime, just for people who are losing track. If your eyes are glassing over, maybe pause the video, go get yourself a Gatorade and come back. Just imagine how players felt playing this. Pilat had a chance that was defended by Jones. 58 minutes of ice time by Seth Jones. 99.9% .9 sure he set the all-time record. I know it was 63 minutes. He was about 60 going into the fifth overtime. I guarantee he had more than three minutes. I didn't stick around to find out. I started doing this review for all you fine people out there. Um, 5.35 left. The Bolts iced it. Um, only five games had ever gone to fifth overtime. Um, Vasilevsky denied Gerby, so Gerby did stay in the game and did get a pretty good chance. Vasilevsky denied him. A good shot by Gerby up high, too. Um, and, and how many miles have the officials skated? This is something that was asked at this point, like, oh, and officials don't get to take a break. They don't. They're on the ice this whole time, and they're tired, too. Um, I, I do wonder, like, if, if you had, um if you would track the officials, how many miles they skated in this game. I'll be interested to see some stats like that. Hopefully there's some stats on that. Uh, last minute chance for Hedman was stopped. Vasilevsky then uh, held on to one with 34 seconds left. This is now the fifth longest game in NHL history. Uh, Columbus iced it with 17 seconds left, but that didn't end up mattering. We go to a fifth overtime. Fifth. And the only reason I put icing on the board is because then, you know, Tampa Bay gets to put the fresh skaters in the ice, and I thought maybe they have one last chance. So, uh, Foodie had a chance at a breakaway. Hedman uh, denied it. Hedman had one of the best games I've ever seen in his career tonight. Hedman was great, considering it's pretty obvious. You could tell in the first period he's not 100%. Whether it's an ankle or a foot or whatever it is, he's not 100%. But he was fantastic defensively tonight. Uh, and then they put up uh, on the board, and I didn't hear the announcers say it, so I'm going to throw this in the review in case you missed it. 
they had on the board uh we are we apologize if you had other plans tonight i assume that was for boston and carolina because at this point they've announced boston carolina's delayed till tomorrow morning so yeah um tampa bay pressed at three minutes the referees were not calling anything and that's key there were penalties could have been called on either team and the referees were not calling it um, neither team was getting shots at that point either. A lot of shot blocking going on, a lot of missed passes. So one thing that does show up once you get into like a fifth overtime is some of those tape-to-tape -tape passes, they're not happening. Um, Vasilevsky stopped Texier. That was the 150th shot of the game. As again, Vasilevsky, the goaltender that's not going to be talked about a lot after this game, and I understand it, he'll understand it too. He was pretty good. Pretty good. Um, delay of game call then on Kukon at 8.03. Uh, Tampa Bay gets a power play. Uh, and then Atkinson got the best chance shorthanded and Hedman defended it. So they had a big debate on Sportsnet after. Now, MSNBC, or you no, know, uh, MSN Sportsnet, MSNSN, uh, and uh, no, NBC, NBC Sportsnet. <laughs> oh my God. All right. <sighs> NBC Sportsnet where MSN came from. They weren't in this at all. <sighs> Basically, Milbury and Boucher debated whether or not there should have been a penalty called on the play. And Milbury said, where do you call the penalty on Hedman? He doesn't really do anything to Atkinson other than make sure he doesn't get the shot off. I agree. I agree with Milbury. But then after, you've got Burke saying they have to call a penalty there. You've got Stewart saying... They, they have to call Anthony Stewart saying that should have been a penalty or a penalty shot. And then they went to Cassie Campbell and she said, I've got to disagree. I don't think that was a penalty or a penalty shot. I think it was just great defense by Hedman. I agree with Cassie. I think that was very well defended by Hedman. And, and then the other statement they made was, well, because there was a penalty kill going on, you have to call that penalty to even it up. And she pointed out, and I agreed with her. And again, I'm agreeing with people that I may not always agree with, although Cassie, I, I agree with her on a lot of things. The delay of game call, you have to call. You have to call that. The, the puck clears the glass, didn't deflect on its way out. You, that's, it's not like they had called a hold. It's not like they called interference. It's not like they called something like that. So the idea that they don't call a penalty on Hedman, where again, watch, watch the replay. You guys can let me know. Uh, I, I did not see a blatant penalty by Hedman there. It has to be something really really blatant to call a, pe a penalty in five overtimes which is what a puck over the glass is so the idea of it being a penalty or a penalty shot i don't think so but you guys can let me know in the comment section below what you thought about that play because again i thought it was fantastically defended by edmund live watching it in full time i was like that's a penalty that's that has to be a penalty and then they showed the replay and i was like no 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 it, it's not a penalty that's fantastically defended uh, but as Ron McLean said to Cassie, she was outvoted three to one. Cassie, if you see this, I'm right there with you. It's three to two, and Milbury's with us. So I don't know how you feel about Milbury being, but that makes it three three, and then it goes to Batman, and Batman doesn't want us talking about it. So yeah, um, no shots over the power play, and we were halfway to overtime number six. We were also over four hours since the last goal was scored in real time. And it, it gets to the point where you're going, so was there actually a goal? And I think this is a great strategy by, by Tampa and by Columbus. We agree that 2020 is a year that just hasn't been fun. The NHL's decided we're going to have games that just don't end. So we wake up tomorrow and we go, hey, it's 2021. I like that strategy. Braden Point ends it at 1027 of the fifth overtime. Uh, Kucherov and Sergachev with the assists. Gavrikov got hurt moments before that one goes in. And that's the fourth longest playoff game ever. And did I hear Brian Burke right? So after this, like, Gavrikov gets dinged with the puck. And he's he's grabbing, I don't know if I hit him here or where it hit him. And he's like, he's got to block that point shot. And I'm thinking, he just got hurt two seconds before that. Like, th they're human. They're in their fifth overtime. And there's, there's Burke. Why aren't you diving in front of the puck, kid? Gavrikov's a warrior. If Gavrikov was was hurting, then he's hurting. It's a legit he's hurting situation. Tampa Bay wins three to two. They win the first game, and it's gotta feel like this was game two, game three. You look at Braden Point did a jump like the Mike Felino jump after. He might have got this much 
off the ice, but he didn't fall down. And after five overtimes, I would totally understand if he did the little jump and then his feet went out from under him because they said, screw you, you're making us jump on the ice. This was a fantastic game. If you want to make the argument that, you know what, after the first overtime, I got bored, I didn't care. Okay, fine. Fine. But I thought this game was fantastic. The shots tell you this was not a game that got slow. 14 to 6 in the first for Tampa, 13 to 10 Tampa in the second, 14 to 10 Tampa in the th in the third. Then we get into game 2. First period of game 2, Tampa Bay out shoots them 12 to 8. Second period it's 10 to 6 for Columbus, 14 to 8 in period number 3 of game 2 for Tampa. We get into game 3 and the shots were 3 to 1 for Columbus. Tampa gets the shot that matters in the first period of game 3. Outshoots them 88 to 63. 151 shots. Hits 59 to 46 for Tampa. This also was a game that featured a lot of hitting. This was a fantastic game. Columbus 1 for 5. Tampa Bay 0 for 4. Corpus Allo sets a brand new record with 85 saves over 88 shots. Vasilevsky, 61 saves on 63 shots. They asked Kelly Rudy after the game. It was Rudy that also said that that should have been a penalty. Rudy uh, said the one regret he has, because he's a goaltender, is that Vasilevsky didn't beat his mark of 73 saves either. So 61 saves for Vasilevsky, and what an amazing game. Huge victory for Tampa and for Columbus. You have now played a lot of overtime. You guys are getting banged up, dinged up, and now you've got to play again on a short turnaround on Thursday at noon Pacific, 3 o'clock Eastern, according to what they were saying anyways. We'll see if anything changes between now and then. But, man, this was this was great. This was one of the best hockey games I've ever watched. I feel privileged to have been able to watch the whole thing. Um, I, I feel privileged to be able to review it for all of you watching. Um, and, and honestly... I can't wait to see the rest of the series. These teams are so evenly matched. This is just great hockey. Really, really good hockey. And I thought it was officiated really well. And just, wow. Let me know your thoughts regarding this game in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And hey, we got one more game to come. That's uh, Vegas and Chicago. I'll get the board set up for that. And uh, we'll see how late that one goes. This is what I was worried about last week. Thankfully, it didn't happen last week where we had three games in each location. Because, boy, that, that could have been ugly. It could have been really late nights. But could still happen. Thank you guys so much for watching. For all your support. It means a lot. I will talk to you again soon.